Happy New Year and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this rather daggy looking leopard print leotard, it's one of the outfits that I used to wear when I competed in powerlifting competitions. And the relevance of that will become clear later in the video. Like a lot of people, we decided to take a break over the Christmas New Year period. And I wasn't really expecting to see a lot of activity on my channel. But suddenly out of nowhere, one of my old videos started getting lots of views and lots of comments. They weren't particularly nice comments, but as I've mentioned before, the YouTube algorithm doesn't care. It just likes comments. I was a little perplexed to start with, but then someone mentioned in the comments that Steve Kirsch had debunked my video on his Substack. How cool is that? I am pretty much a nobody, and Steve Kirsch kindly chose to promote my video. Now, Steve Kirsch doesn't like it when he is ignored. For example, he was a bit miffed that Dr. Ivan Mecton didn't include him in a tweet where he mentioned how much certain grifters made from spreading misinformation. And he tweeted the following. How come I'm not listed? Do you know how I made my money? In high tech as founder of two multi-billion dollar companies. Well, I certainly wouldn't want Steve Kirsch to think that I'm ignoring him, especially given that he is the founder of two multi-billion dollar companies, which, to be fair, is pretty impressive. I certainly haven't founded any multi-billion dollar companies. I do have a very cute dog, though. But anyway, so that Steve doesn't think I am ignoring him, I have decided to devote a whole video to him. After all, he did very kindly write a newsletter on his Substack about one of my other videos. And this is the newsletter that he wrote. The heading says, Do vaccines cause autism? It sure looks like it to me. He then goes on to write, I was watching a Susan Oliver video claiming it's just coincidence, so I decided to take a look for myself. It seems clear from the source data that she's giving you false information. He then shows the results of a VAERS query. He then goes on to say, this one VAERS query, which took me all of 10 seconds to do, is all you need to know. And do you see the most interesting thing in this chart? The COVID-19 vaccine isn't associated with a single case of autism, explanation mark. However, upon further investigation, that's because the symptom autism is now entered into VAERS as autism spectrum disorder. There were just 34 cases. For the MMR vaccine, however, the numbers are significantly higher than for other vaccines. The analysis needs to be a bit more subtle than this one graph. We have to normalise by the number of doses, but the signal is just too big to ignore. Andrew Wakefield was right. This is why the CDC ordered William Thompson to destroy all data linking vaccines and autism because they don't want you to ever find out. Here's Susan Oliver's video, you know, where she says it's just a coincidence and there is nothing to worry about. She never shows any bears query like the one I just did. I wonder why. Question mark, question mark, question, question mark. It's trivial to do, but impossible to explain away, dot, dot, dot. Perhaps that is the reason. And when she talks about the COVID vaccine adverse events, she doesn't address any of the issues I've surfaced. I was not persuaded. Oh, that's a bit sad. My video didn't persuade Steve Kirsch. Oh, well. Anyway, Mr. Kirsch was wondering why I never showed a VAERS query like the one that he did. The reason is simple. It's a ridiculous query to make. He is literally comparing the incidence of autism reports between vaccines that have been on the market for different amounts of time and are given to different age groups. 
it's a completely pointless query. If you are actually interested in determining if there is a link between the MMR vaccine and autism, you need to compare autism rates between those who have been vaccinated and those who haven't. And there have, in fact, been a large number of studies doing just that. And here is a meta-analysis of five cohort studies involving 1,256,407 children and five case control studies involving 9,920 children. So we're talking about a very large meta-analysis. And this is what they found. There was no relationship between vaccination and autism. There was no relationship between vaccination and ASD, which is short for autism spectrum disorder. There was no relationship between autism slash ASD and the MMR vaccine. There was no relationship between autism and ASD and thimerosal. There was no relationship between autism, ASD and mercury. And findings of this meta-analysis suggest that vaccinations are not associated with the development of autism or autism spectrum disorder. So there is no reason to run meaningless bears queries because we actually have hard data. That being said, I did decide to have a look at the VAERS data around MMR vaccines and did find some very interesting and relevant data. So what I did was I ran a query on reports of autism or autism spectrum disorder for the MMR vaccine by the year the report appeared on VAERS. And as you can see, the results are far from uniform. They started out really low and then exploded when Andrew Wakefield's fraudulent claims started getting traction in the media. And now they are low again. If the VAERS reports were actually a reflection of the incidence of autism and ASD following vaccines, we wouldn't be seeing these wild fluctuations with publicity. They would be similar each year. And that brings me to another claim that is constantly being made by Steve Kirsch. He claims that we know the COVID vaccines are dangerous because VAERS reports are currently higher for COVID vaccines than for other vaccines. But for that to be a valid argument, there can't be any other influences on whether or not a VAERS report is made. And as this graph clearly shows, there are other influences. If a vaccine is getting lots of attention from anti-vaxxers making false claims about it, people are more likely to report adverse events. And just as that was the case with the MMR vaccine, that is now the case with the COVID vaccines. And as an example of this, Dr. John Campbell recently made a video where he announced that he had made a yellow card report, which is the UK equivalent of a VAERS report because he was diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure a few months after getting a COVID booster shot. Now, Dr. John Campbell is an overweight man in his 60s who already had previously been diagnosed with high cholesterol. So he has a number of risk factors for hypertension, but he thought it was possible that his hypertension could be related to the vaccine. So he submitted a report. Would he have submitted a report if his hypertension diagnosis had been a few months after a flu vaccine? Or would he have assumed a more obvious explanation? And there are even more reasons for increased reports with COVID vaccines. Firstly, there are different reporting requirements for COVID vaccines compared with other vaccines. Healthcare providers are required by law to report any serious adverse event or death following the administration of a COVID vaccine, even if they don't believe it was caused by the vaccine. But for other vaccines that have been on the market for a while, they only have to report specific events. And this table shows some of the vaccines and the 
corresponding events that have to be reported. And of course, this doesn't mean that other events can't be reported for existing vaccines. It's just not a legal requirement. Another reason for the difference in the number of various reports for the COVID vaccine compared with other vaccines is that it is being given to a very different population. A number of vaccines are given to primarily young populations who are unlikely to develop a lot of adverse events that are being reported. For example, it is rare for people to develop hypertension in childhood when a lot of vaccines are administered, but it is common to develop it in middle age and beyond. And there is not just a difference in the makeup of the population getting the COVID vaccine, there is also a difference in the size of the population. The COVID vaccine was given to a large population of people over a short time frame. That was not the case with any previous vaccine on the market. Yet another reason for the increase in adverse event reporting is what is known as the Weber effect. The Weber effect is a phenomenon where there is increased volume of reported adverse events for new drugs within their first years of approval. And the reason for the increase is because older drugs are thought to be better understood as they have been around for a longer time. And therefore, clinicians feel there is less need to report adverse events. So what Steve Kirsch is seeing as suspicious is just a lack of understanding on his part of medical data. And he does this a lot. For example, this tweet here, which Steve Kirsch shared just after Christmas. He shares a video of a number of weightlifters fainting and says, I have never seen anything like this before. How can the entire medical community not be curious as to what is causing this? And I'll just show you a bit of the footage. Yeah, so we're like, you've done it for doubles. Right. <laughs> I was going to be <laughs> <laughs> And if you're wondering where the footage came from, it's part of a compilation video that was uploaded to YouTube in March 2019. So no prizes for guessing why the medical community isn't curious about it. The people in the video clip all passed out after doing deadlifts and deadlifts are one of the three lifts that you have to do in a powerlifting competition. The others are bench press and squat. And this is a picture of me when I was much, much younger about to do a deadlift. Passing out after doing a deadlift is a fairly well-known phenomenon. I personally haven't done it, but I have seen it happen to other people. It typically happens because you are holding your breath for too long or you are dehydrated. And this results in a decrease in oxygen to the brain and hence you pass out. And if you're wondering how I went in the powerlifting competition that the photo is from, I won! <laughs> Maybe not as impressive as being a tech billionaire, but... I was pretty proud of myself. Now, no doubt I will be getting the inevitable comments asking me why I don't debate Steve Kirsch. I actually don't do debates, full stop. As Mark Twain said, never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Now, to be clear, I'm not actually saying Steve Kirsch is an idiot. He is obviously a smart guy. He founded two multi-billion dollar companies, which, as I previously said, is impressive. But as I have covered in this video, his arguments regarding vaccines are pretty idiotic. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented or watch more of the Deadlifters painting video, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. 
I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.